Hello one and all, welcome to Seen Through Glass. Welcome to a typically British spring day. The weather really can't decide what it's doing. One second it's sunny, the next it's raining, it's very windy. I'm being a bit of a cliched Brit here, aren't I, by talking about the weather. So let's move on and talk about this the BMW M3 Touring. And yes, of course, I have asked for this loan so that I could make content for all of you, but also for another reason, a slightly more personal reason. There's a good chance I might wanna buy one of these cars. I think most of you know that at the end of last year, I became a dad for the first time. Actually, my daughter's now three months old. Time really flies when you have kids. People warned me of that, didn't realize how true it was. But anyway, in the last three months, I found myself doing a bit of a deep dive into a part of the car world that maybe I'd underappreciated up until this point, the world of dad cars, and more specifically, fast dad cars. Suddenly, I've been analyzing cars in a way that I never had before, rather than looking at soul, emotion, character, the way a car makes me feel. I'm suddenly looking at boot space and ride quality and tire noise. And let's face it, I think the minute this M3 Touring launched, a lot of us petrolhead parents out there went, hmm, that could be the one. Because it's been a while, we've all been waiting for this, right? We've had the Audi RS4 forever, we've had the Mercedes C63 forever, but BMW have been holding out on their tourings. And I think if you are a petrolhead parent, SUVs will never quite tick the box, even if they are super SUVs, when it comes to pure driving pleasure. If you want something that you can take to the Alps, but also to nursery, wagons are really high up on the list. Oh. Here's the postman. So this video is gonna feel a little bit different to my usual ones because I'm gonna be analyzing this car as a parent, talking you through what I think about it as a dad. Now, hopefully it will still be enjoyable even if you're not a parent because essentially I'm gonna be analyzing the minute details of what it's like to live with one of these cars. I'm not gonna talk too much about the performance because, well, it's an M3 with a bigger boot. And there've already been tons of reviews about driving this car dynamically and the drift mode and blah, 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 blah. We will, of course, have some fun, but yeah, I wanna look at random things like rear leg space and how quick the boot opens and just odd things like that to work out whether that this car, the M3 Touring, could be my ultimate dad car. Well, I'm kicking things off in the back because I wanna dive straight in and answer what I think is one of the most important questions when it comes to living with an M3 Touring as a parent. What's the space like? How does it compare to an M3 saloon? How does it compare, more importantly for me, to an X3? And first things first, let's talk about the boot. Because I realize it's not actually specific to an M3 touring, more so a 3 Series touring, but it's important we discuss it because it's huge. Like, honestly, I don't really understand how it's so big because as a reminder, once again, I own an X3. So I thought I knew what to expect when it came to the boot of this car but BMW dropped it off. I opened it up to load it up for the weekend and I was like, huh, something's different here. And I really realized how different when I loaded the pram into the car for the first time. My pram currently detaches. I have the base and then like a carry cot or bassinet because my daughter's so young. In the X3, those two parts take up the majority of the boot. If we ever want anything else, we have to kind of stack it on top of the pram parts. It makes it all a little bit stressful but with this car i put the base and the bassinet into the boot and i was like i still got lots of space and i had told my wife vicky to pack light for this weekend away and i kind of regretted doing so because i was like babe we can fit like three more suitcases in here i i don't understand how it's possible and as i say i'm aware it's a three series touring thing not an m3 thing but yeah the boot is unbelievably impressive in this car and then we move on to this main cabin space, which I think is equally as impressive. It feels huge in here, and that might, might have something to do with these M Performance carbon fiber bucket style seats, which I have to say as a driver, I'm not that fussed about. Okay, they're great once you're in them and they kind of look cool, but getting in and out feels a bit clumsy, and for a daily, I just want something a bit easier to use. But they're thin and they're sculpted and they've also got lots of holes in them that just gives this impression of increased space. The driver's seat is currently set up in my driving position and a reminder for new viewers, I'm six foot two, I don't often fit behind my own driving seat. 
but check out the amount of legroom I've got back here. This is unreal. Okay, fine. I haven't sat in the back of my X3 that often, but I can tell you right now, I do not usually have this much space. And my wife Vicky sat back here yesterday and she was like, oh my God, there is so much space. And definitely in comparison to the X3. But then we move on to the piece de la resistance. Check out my car seat setup. This is the rather bulky Isofix base. And then the car seat itself, which also is not small. Now in the X3, not only do we have to move this passenger seat all the way forward, so far forward that basically no one can sit in the front passenger seat. But even when we do so, this element of the car seat is rammed right up tight against that front passenger seat, meaning it's actually quite hard to swivel this seat around, which is what you're supposed to be able to do. And I, it's one of the first things that kind of made me think, oh, have we got the wrong family car? But no, suddenly in this M3 Touring, we've got loads of space, space even here to put additional bags and nappies and things like that. As I say, I can move this chair super easily um, the other way as well if I was standing outside the door. And then unbelievably, people can actually sit in that front passenger seat. Case in point, look at this. Very comfortably in the seat with the baby seat behind me, plenty of space for that. It means genuinely you could have a family of four, if not even five, in this car on a long journey, I don't think anyone's gonna complain, which cannot be said for our X3. We've had family members come to stay, and it'd be me, my wife, a family member and the baby, and we're like, it doesn't really work. I've had to be like, I'm not sure we're all gonna fit. Whilst this thing, off we go to Monaco, so I can drop everyone off and head to the mountains. Anyway, I'm aware that, firstly, you can order these seats in non-M3s, and maybe this again is just something about a three series touring, not M3 specific. So let me jump into the driver's seat. Let's hit the road and talk about, yeah, what it's like once you get moving in this thing. Now there are many reasons why I feel very lucky to have met my wife. So many reasons that if I was to list them all, this video would go on, well, for infinity. But there is one reason in particular that benefits me professionally. It's her unbelievable natural ability to analyze cars' ride quality. It, it, I don't think she even realizes she's doing it sometimes. It's that much of an instinctive skill for her to say, oh, you know, this, this, this car's too firm. It's bumpy. It's jolty. Oh, this is annoying. So I was a little bit nervous when it came to our week with the M3 touring because, well, yeah, it's an M3. It's not going to be sloshy and slappy. We ain't getting Rolls Royce quality ride in this thing. But that's what you want, right, from an M car. The good thing is, though, that for this latest generation M3, firstly, I do feel things have sort of dialed back a little bit, and you have the ability to play with the suspension settings, or at least the firmness. You've got Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. So for any times that my wife, and admittedly my baby is in the car, I'm always in comfort. So after the first 30 minutes that we were all in the car together, I turned to her and said, how are you finding the ride? You know, a little, little bit firmer maybe than the X3? She was like, yeah, but not bad. Not bad? Should I place a deposit now? I mean, it's, uh, that's in, hey, in her analysis of cars, Suspension firmness, not bad, is nearly a, an A star. So, you know, you, you do feel the bumps, but it's, it's fine. Now, as time has gone on, that analysis has changed slightly, but I'll, I'll explain why. Because I would agree with her. I actually think the ride quality in this car is, is really pretty good. You can definitely feel the road. And if you see bumps or potholes or things in front of you, you'll feel them through the steering wheel and through the base of the car. It's kind of fine and it's super reassuring once you start going fast because the car just stays so nicely flat. But the only negative is, if you've got a baby on board, every now and again, the car does a bit of a, a shudder, a sideways shudder over sort of jolts and things like that as opposed to just a bump, which is fine, but when you've got a baby, this isn't so nice. It 
just happens every now and again if you hit an uneven part of the road or a big bump and things like that. And that has now started to really irritate her. And as I say, she has a very high level of expectation or approval when it comes to these things. And that's good. It's integrity. She's got, I'm easily impressed. She's got integrity. But I, I would happily live with this ride quality. But as a family, and especially with a very young baby, are there going to be moments where this car shakes your baby awake from a deep sleep? Potentially. And will you then regret that decision? Maybe. So just be aware, if you've got a very young baby or a baby that you want to sleep or like to sleep in the car, every now and again this M3 is going to shove one of those at you. But that's, I guess, what's going to happen with a sports car. Just a very quick interruption, because whilst it is test drive month here on the channel, meaning I'm spending most of my time in the UK, doesn't mean I'm not still using a VPN. And, and yes, I use NordVPN, who support this channel and have sponsored this part of the video. Look, I'm pretty sure most of you would have heard me talk about NordVPN before. I don't want to repeat myself. If you are about to skip ahead past this integration, just the one takeaway you should really have is, well, make sure you have a VPN on any device that's about to connect to the internet. Because these days you never know who might be looking out or trying to steal your information when you go online. It's your bank details. Maybe they're trying to hack your social media or just watch what you're doing in a kind of creepy way. And a VPN stops that from happening. It essentially puts a virtual wall up between you and those dodgy people. So yeah, as I say, I recommend NordVPN because I've been using them for like six or seven years. I think I first heard about them all in Casey Neistat talked about NordVPN when, back when it was daily vlogging. And now it's amazing that they support this channel and offer all of you an amazing deal if you use my link below. But as I say, if you've kind of not really been paying attention or you've skipped ahead, just the one takeaway is get a VPN in place. And I recommend NordVPN, but just make sure you've got a VPN in place, because not only will it protect you, but it will also allow you to access content that maybe you don't get in your own country, whether that's shows that are on Netflix USA, but not on Netflix UK, or maybe there's a series that you want to watch which is being shown in Australia, but you can't get access to. For me, it's the F1. NordVPN allows me to keep up with the F1 wherever I am, whether it's in the UK or further afield. So yes, once again, I'm not going to bang on about it. Link below, an amazing deal from NordVPN. Get it in place, get it activated whenever you go online. Anyway, let's get back to the M3. Hello there. Uh, can I just get an oat milk flat white? Yeah. The green smoothie. Uh, the berry smoothie. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, the chicken salad. Mm. Well, uh, like a turkey sandwich. Yeah, okay. Let's try that. Thank you. Uh, this is the Jolly Nice Farm Shop, which has an amazing drive through which today seems to be sold out of everything. <laughs> but they do really good coffee and amazing snacks. It's just outside Sirencester in Gloucestershire. If you're in this area, you're out in the car, highly recommend it. Very good as well if you're with kids, because they do some amazing snacks and sandwiches and ice creams. And I think there's even like, not a petting zoo, but yeah, like there's little donkeys. There's little donkeys over there. So, good spot for the uh, M3 Touring. Well, I'm going to take two seconds and sit with the donkeys and enjoy my coffee before we head back on the road. And whilst I do that, I guess it's worth talking about curb appeal of this vehicle or petting zoo car park appeal, or more realistically for the context of this video, nursery slash school car park appeal. I, I think we've all got used to the front end of this generation M3, M4, haven't we? I see standard saloons and, and M4 coupes on the road and I'm like, that's, that's pretty good looking. I know at the beginning we were all shocked, but quite like it and for me turn any car into an estate car and it just kind of looks infinitely cooler i parked this thing next to a taycan cross turismo in the supermarket car park the other day and i was like yeah just cool i'm not a mass fan of this spec it's like frozen gray red interior and gold calipers but i guess it's bmw uk just showing off what you can do i've seen some very dignified looking m3 tourings and I think they look the bomb. I'm actually a big fan. It's aggressive and out there enough to let people know that you're in something serious, an M product, without being garish like it was when this car, or when the M3, M4 first launched. So yeah, I'm a fan of the way it looks. Now I said I 
wasn't really going to focus on the performance of this car in today's video, but well, I've changed my mind because it would be rude not to. And let's face it, it's just half what fast wagons are all about. The moment where you drop off the kids or the road opens up in front of you and you suddenly have a chance to exploit the car that you're behind the wheel of. And I tell you what, it is easy to exploit the performance of this M3 Touring. It's what I would like to call accessible speed. I mean, I'm out here on a super damp and mucky and slimy road and I just whacked it into some kind of sport mode and I'm suddenly flying. I say some kind of sport mode because like a lot of modern BMWs, there are a million ways to set up this car, a million configurable elements, and you can pre-program them into these two red M buttons, but even that, it just takes a bit too long. So I just, I hit something that said sport, and am I at maximum potential? Maybe not. Do I care? No, because <laughs> I'll be honest, what I've got right now is enough. And I wanted to go straight over, but that lorry is going straight over. So I guess let's go right. Here we go. Launch again. Oh my God. Talk, talk steer. It ripped the wheel. Oh, was that him? That was an E30 M3. That wasn't even planned. But yeah, literally ripped the steering wheel out of my hands there because, well, this is a talky car. And in the UK, M3 competitions, they're all X-Drive, I believe. Uh, you can use the very clever X-Drive system, turn off traction control and end up with a rear-wheel drive vehicle. But yeah, majority of the time you've got the front wheels also pulling you down the road. And just then you saw me launch out. I was like, whoa! But yeah, this thing, it, it's gonna get you point A to point B so quickly. And the, the firmness of the suspension that I was half joking about earlier, really lends itself to this car then being fantastic around the corners when you're going fast. Is it the most emotive driving experience ever? Is it my favorite fast car? No, but as a daily, as a wagon, as something to really enjoy when you can, it's got all the performance you can need, all the confidence, it feels way lighter on its toes than, for example, the RS6, which I owned at the start of last year. This is still heavy, but it, it doesn't feel cumbersome in any way. It feels, dare I say it, a little bit nimble, or nimble enough for a family wagon, for sure. Well, I'm back where I started, which means my coffee run is over and dad responsibilities are about to start once again. Before I head inside to change some nappies, let me try and sum up my experience with this car and answer the question that I asked myself at the start of the video. Could this be the ultimate STG dad car? I'm sure lots of you are thinking I'm going to say, yes, I'm going to swap the X3 for one. It's tempting. I genuinely love my tie with this thing. But if I was to actually consider that, there are two other cars that I should think about or, or consider first. And another question I need to ask myself about all the cars in my garage. So firstly, the other cars. Both, unsurprisingly, are also 3 Series Tourings. Because let's face it, whilst the performance in this thing is miraculous, and I hope I got that across a moment ago, many elements of this M3 Touring that I've enjoyed have been the 3 Series Touring elements. The practicality, the usability, the space, etc. It's just the fact that it's also an M3 that makes it so damn cool. So yeah, there's this car's baby brother, the M340i Touring, and this car's evil cousin, the Alpina B3. Now, the M340i Touring obviously wouldn't get close to this in terms of performance, but I think it would be quick enough on most UK roads. It would have slightly softer suspension. The Alpina would probably be able to compete with this in terms of performance and sort of street cred, but also have a little bit more of a comfortable suspension setup. So last night, I actually spec'd up all three cars because I'm genuinely intrigued. And in my ideal spec, the M340i came out at like 69 grand, the Alpina at 93 grand, and then this car at 96 grand. For me, that means I have to immediately discount the Alpina because, well, previously I've looked at quotes for financing them, and they always end up like 300 quid more per month than the equivalent BMW. And at 93 grand, it's just, well, it's three grand less than an actual M3. I just, as cool as Alpinas are, anyway, we're moving on from that. The 340i, is fascinating because it's 27 grand cheaper than this car. And as I say, I think on most UK roads, it's gonna be damn near quick enough, then you're getting all the other benefits that I like, but you're then missing out on the M3 part of it. 
Am I going to take a 340i touring into the Alps? Am I going to make loads of content on it? Could I turn up to a Goodwood breakfast meet and be like, hey guys, check out my M340i. But could I do all that with an M3? Absolutely. So the final question I'd have to ask myself is I think, look, I could switch to an M340i and just get all these benefits over an X3, but it would stay, well, the sleeper car of the collection, just the family car that my wife uses the majority of the time. If I was to get an M3 touring, well, it's a car that I'm going to want to use most of the time. So then is my wife and baby going to be left stranded when I'm out filming and having a laugh in this thing? So maybe it doesn't actually make sense. Maybe I need to keep a daily, well, let my wife have her car and go about trying to find a four-seater sports car that doesn't have to be this practical. I don't know. Lots for me to figure out about my cars. But this thing, I have really, really enjoyed. And genuinely, there's a big part of me that really wants one. But at 96 grand, knowing that I could get a near as damn experience, 27 grand cheaper, it's a hard or bitter pill to swallow. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I'm due inside, so I'm going to finish things off. Give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.